It is 6.12 p.m., 12 minutes past the trade deadline, and to be honest, it was kind of underwhelming. However, there were a lot of names that were moved, so we're going to be going over all of them, giving you my opinion on each trade, as well as who are the biggest winners and losers of the deadline, and kind of some confusing teams that really didn't do what they should have. We're going to start off with 10 players who were rumored to be traded, but actually did not end up being traded. Luis Robert, Garrett Crochet, we'll get back to him, Blake Snell, Brent Rooker, Jonathan India, Jamison Tyon, Luis Renifo, Taylor Ward, Tyler Anderson, and lightly rumored was Tarek Skubal. Garrett Crochet is one I'll touch on here for a little bit more. It's because he came out with the quote saying that he only wanted an extension if he was going to pitch in the postseason. He's coming up on an innings limit, so this one made a lot of sense for why he wasn't traded. Luis Robert, I think the package was a little bit too big. Blake Snell, too much money. Brent Rooker, the A's just didn't seem to want to get rid of him at all. Jonathan India was kind of just a depth piece right now for the Reds, and they kind of lightly sold, but probably just couldn't find a suitor for him. Jamison Tyon was also quite a bit of money to take on. Luis Renifo, Taylor Ward, Tyler Anderson. We'll go over all three of them together. There was no reason they should not have been traded. All three of those guys should have easily been out the door. The Angels once again had one of the worst deadlines. And then Tarek Skubal, it just was going to be a, if the Orioles decided to offer Jackson Holiday, then they probably would have taken it. Otherwise, it didn't make sense for them to trade him. Since all those guys stayed on their own team, you guys can go to SeatGeek and use code Century17 to grab yourself $20 off tickets to go see any of them play. If you're a Tigers fan and you wanted to see Tarek Skuba, well, guess what? You're going to get another opportunity to now. Use code Century17 on SeatGeek. It grabs yourself $20 off your first purchase of 50 or more. We can kind of go team by team here. We'll start with the Arizona Diamondbacks. They really brought in two pieces, Josh Bell, who was put on waivers by the Marlins, and then AJ Puck, who was kind of overpaid for. Davis and Lidde Los Santos has been a monster in the minor leagues and they traded him for AJ Puck who's kind of not great. Christian Walker injury is why they brought in Bell. Bell was on waivers. There was no actual return that was announced for that anyway. If I had to be honest it's probably cash considerations. Overall kind of what we thought the Diamondbacks would do staying pat. The Braves decided to reunite with Jorge Soler of course and then they also brought in Luke Jackson, who also used to be brave. They give up Matzik and Caballos, who I believe is a very young prospect. That's really all they did at the deadline. It's all that they really could do. They do not have a deep farm at all. So as much as they wanted to go out and probably get a starter, they really couldn't. This team who I'll give the winner of the deadline overall, it's the Baltimore Orioles. And even though they could have done more, they did plenty. Their newest trade was bringing in Eloy Jimenez. I'll just go over the biggest ones, by the way. They bring in Eloy Jimenez kind of towards the end, kind of at the buzzer a little bit. I don't think the return has been announced on that as I'm recording this yet. They give up a lot to get Trevor Rogers, who has control, but they give up the number 15 prospect in baseball and Connor Norby, as well as Kyle Stowers, who's a nice depth outfielder too. They'll be part of that Miami rebuild. They grab Zach Eflin from the Rays and in division trade they give up three bodies who weren't really high up in their rankings and then they do the weird swap the austin hayes for sir anthony dominguez pache was going to be dfa'd so that doesn't really count to me in the trade and he probably will be dfa'd soon by the orioles but the sir anthony for hayes trade it was a depth for depth type of thing between two really big contenders and they grabbed dominguez out of it he'll be just fine in the back of the bullpen Boston did a few things. They bring back James Paxton. That was a few days ago. They also did Danny Jansen as well a few days ago. They gave up a few prospects in that one, the in-division trade. They grabbed Quinn Priester, funny enough. This was yesterday. And then today they brought in Lucas Sims from the Reds. They had a weird decision to make where they could have sold off some of their pieces and still contended like Nick Pavetta, something like that. But they mostly stand pat. They bring in a couple of pitchers and I guess they kind of replaced Reese McGuire with Danny Jansen as well. The Cubs go with a buy and sell type of deadline here. Uh, they give up Mark Leiter Jr. to the Yankees. They bring in a couple of bodies, but they bring in Isak Paredes, a year and a half of Isak Paredes. They give up Christopher Morrell, who's having a disappointing year this year, but kind of a, a barrel king. Hunter Baige and Ty Johnson as well go to the Rays in that deal. So a buy and sell type of thing. They kind of were in a position where they probably could have sold off a lot more pieces. Tyon, Bellinger, Suzuki were guys who I kind of expected to almost be traded a little bit, but mostly Stan Pat. They bring in Paredes, who's probably going to give them more performance. They're probably looking to next year a little bit more with that one. And they brought in Nate Pearson to be depth in the bullpen. The White Sox very much sold. They didn't, didn't sell their biggest pieces, Robert and Crochet. However, they gave up Fetty. They gave up Fam. A couple of lower end guys also got given up today. 
Tanner Banks went to the Phillies, guys like that. Eloy Jimenez, who I didn't really expect to get traded, he ended up going to the Baltimore Orioles. They brought in more bodies. They're kind of a far away from contending, so they just need to do that. Their GM came out and said that they wanted more higher end prospects rather than trying to get a bunch of bodies, which I can understand and I can appreciate, but where you are at right now, you kind of need to just get bodies. Cincinnati mostly sold off pieces. Frankie Montas, Lucas Sims. They bring in Joey Weimer, kind of to be a depth outfielder, and he's kind of young and still has potential. Ovis Portes, another pitcher that they can bring in. In division trade in there. They also traded for Ty France, who was DFA'd by the Mariners earlier this week. They were in another weird spot where they could have pretty much done anything and no one would have been mad at them because they're close to the playoff race, but they haven't been playing super well. Can't really blame them for what they did. Cleveland really made two moves. It was bringing in Lane Thomas. That was yesterday, and he ended up playing for him yesterday as well. And then they brought in Alex Cobb. The return on that has not fully been announced yet, actually. But Lane Thomas, they give up three prospects, a couple of shortstops, and a pitcher. Alex Cobb, he's older. He was just kind of a, I guess, get depth starting pitching. But Lane Thomas will probably play almost every day for them. I wish they did more, but for what the market ended up being, I think this was fine. Here's what you need to know about the Rockies. They did nothing at the deadline. Let's move on to the next team. Seriously, why do they keep doing this? I don't know. Detroit ended up giving up Andrew Chafin, Jack Flaherty, which was kind of a butter, buzzer beater, by the way, to the Dodgers. They ended up getting Trey Sweeney and one other prospect who I forgot because it's not on the spot track yet. They got Joseph Montalvo and then Chase Lee in the Andrew Chafin trade. They gave up Carson Kelly a couple of days ago as well. So they minorly sold off some pieces. That was about all they really could do, though, unless they were going to give up Scooball, which just wouldn't make a ton of sense. The Astros actually did buy a few pieces, mostly in the pitching department, kind of overpaid for Kikuchi. They gave up Low Perfido, Wagner, and Bloss, which was kind of a lot for a 4-7 ERA guy. Give up Caleb. They grabbed Caleb Ferguson from the Yankees, who they just kind of gave up on him a little bit. It wasn't really working for them in New York. And that's really all they did. The deadline, couple of pitchers to add depth. They've been hot kind of just going to keep going with how they have it. Kansas City, I would give them like the co-winner of the deadline. They made a lot of moves. I'm actually going to bring this one back to a couple of weeks ago when they picked up Hunter Harvey and they gave up a really big prospect as well as a as well as a compensatory pick as well. They also brought in Michael Lorenzen, Paul DeYoung to be kind of a depth infielder. And then Lucas Ersag, who really has been one of the better relievers in baseball. Mo a lot of upside with him. He like sits 99 position player converted into a reliever. They don't have a strong farm system, but they didn't give up a ton to get any of them either. The Angels didn't do enough. I actually like the move where they brought in George Klassen because he's a very underrated prospect and he's having a really nice year and to, they gave up Carlos Estevez for it. But again, they should have given up Ward, Anderson, Renjifo. Kevin Pillar should not be on this team, but they are. So the Dodgers made a couple of moves. Flaherty was the biggest one. They brought back Ahmed Rosario for the second straight year. <laughs> And then they were part of that three-team trade. They ended up getting Tommy Edmond and Michael Kopech out of it. That was with the White Sox and the Cardinals as well in there. What they ended up giving up was Miguel Vargas, Albertus, and Perez, I believe. The Marlins very much sold. Their biggest and first move was when they gave up Jazz Chisholm. They also gave up AJ Puck, but I'll just go through the list. AJ Puck, Jazz Chisholm, Trevor Rogers, Josh Bell was on waivers. He got traded. Tanner Scott, Brian Hoying, JT Chargois, and then Brian De La Cruz. They really blew up their roster and they brought in bodies. They brought in 14 prospects and then the Josh Bell return has not been released. I would assume that's cash, but that's still kind of ridiculous. They are going full rebuild. Let's take a break from the action and I'm going to remind you guys, please subscribe and leave a like on the video if you are enjoying it. A lot more content is going to be coming at you more consistently from Century Baseball. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. That's all I have to say. Go buy some Sentry merch in the description as well. Milwaukee's biggest move was bringing in Frankie Montas, and they give up Joey Weimer, who used to be a pretty real prospect, and Jake Junis in that. Nick Mears to be in the bullpen. Aaron Savali was a few weeks ago, but that kind of started their deadline acquisitions. That's about it. Some depth starting pitching for the most part. Didn't really expect him to do much more. Minnesota! They grabbed Trevor Richards. That was really about it. A couple of bullpen pieces. The Mets really biggest move was bringing in Paul Blackburn. They kind of had a decision where they could have traded away all their starting pitchers on expiring contracts because they would have gotten a haul back for it. Jesse Winker also came over to be kind of a depth outfielder. That was a pretty nice move for them as well. Ryan Stanek came over. They kind of just filled in the edges a little bit. No, nothing super impactful. Winker is probably the most impactful, but even then. So the Yankees newest move, they had a buzzer beater as well. They brought in Eniel De Los Santos from the Padres. Padres kind of just like gave up a reliever because they brought in a couple. They gave up Caleb Ferguson. They brought in Mark Leiter Jr. So really relievers. 
but the biggest one being Jazz Chisholm. That's a very nice move. It was one that they probably needed to make because they needed an infielder who could play multiple positions. Oakland really only gave up two pieces. That was Paul Blackburn and Lucas Erseg. Could have given up Rooker, but they didn't seem to want to get rid of him. I guess I respect it. They're keeping some guys around. The Phillies did fine at the deadline. They brought in Austin Hayes in that depth for depth trade I talked about a little while ago. And then they brought in Carlos Estevez, which at the time looked like an overpay. And let's be honest, it probably was an overpay, but the market, the way it shaped out, kind of shaped how this trade ended up going. The Phillies had a fine deadline. I wish they would have gotten another outfielder, but it's okay. Pittsburgh brought in some peripheral lineup guys who actually will probably play a lot for this team. Isaiah counter who is actually on a rehab assignment right now here in Buffalo. Brian De La Cruz as well, who's he's kind of been up and down, but he can be good. Really tall. A lot of, a lot of power should be coming out of him. Josh Walker was traded for today. Jalen Beeks yesterday. And then they give up Quinn Priester, who was kind of a starter who didn't really have a place with them. Uh, you wish they would have gotten a superstar like Robert or something, but this was more realistically what they were going to do. They kept to their word. They did buy some pieces. San Diego had a kind of busy deadline in the way that they gave up a lot. Four prospects to the Marlins for Tanner Scott and Brian Hoying, and it was three of their top five as well. They really needed to go for it. They also brought in Jason Adam. They gave up so many prospects in the last couple of months, starting with the Arise trade. They're going for it. I mean, they see the window. They know it's now. The Giants, who actually just brought in Mark Canna, another buzzer beater. Mark Canna just went over to them. It's in a passing tweet. Give me a second. Eric Silva and Mark Canna went to the Giants. Whatever. They gave up Alex Cobb, they gave up Mike Bauman, Jorge Soler, Luke Jackson. They very much took advantage of the selling market and they kind of gave up on the year, I guess. Mariners had a very active deadline. JT Chargois, Justin Turner. They traded away Ty France, but they brought in Randy Arozarena as well. They got hitters. It's what they needed to do. Chargois to be a bullpen depth piece as well. Mariners had a good deadline. It's what they needed to do. The Cardinals' only real move was that three-team trade. They ended up getting Fetty, Pham, and Oliver Gonzalez. I actually like this move for the Cardinals. It's two positions that they really needed to fill. Fetty to give them innings, and then Pham to... I mean, he can go off at any time. Like, he had a really nice first half last year, and even this year he's playing fine. They give up Tommy Edmond and a couple of prospects in the deal as well. Tampa Bay, you want to talk about a seller. The Rays sold off just about everything. Tyler Zuber, Ahmed Rosario, Jason Adam, Isak Paredes, Zach Eflin, Randy Rosarena. Go back to earlier this month, Phil Maton. They kind of punted on that deal. They brought in a lot. And my favorite one is when they brought in Christopher Morell, who I think is going to thrive with this team. They took advantage of the seller's market and they brought in a lot of capital. And next year, they're going to be able to compete because everyone's coming back for them. That was the smartest thing the Rays could have done. Texas with a weird buying and selling deadline. They bring in Andrew Chafin, but they give up Michael Lorenzen. They bought Carson Kelly. A weird deadline, but mostly stayed pat. World Series champs, I mean, they can see if they can run it out and try to get to the playoffs again. Toronto definitely sold. Isaiah Connor falefa Trevor Richards, Yusei Kikuchi, Justin Turner, Danny Jansen, Nate Pearson, Yimmy Garcia, just to name a few. That's most of what happened around the deadline. They brought in some prospects as well. They really kind of fleeced the Astros. Jake Bloss, Joey Loperfito, and Will Wagner was a really big return for the Kikuchi trade. So Blue Jays had a good deadline. They saw where they were at, kind of looking towards next year. They didn't give up Vlad or Bo either. The Nationals sold three pieces around this deadline. Lane Thomas, Jesse Winker, and then a couple weeks ago, they gave up Hunter Harvey. They bring in five prospects in the process. Clemney, Tenna, Ramirez Jr., Stewart, and Wallace, as well as the 2024 compensatory pick. Soft sell. This team's actually going to be ready to compete relatively soon, so I actually like this deadline for the Nationals. They don't give up Trevor Williams either. A tier list of all the trades that happened will be coming out in a short form video tomorrow. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, leave a like as well as subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought of all of the reactions in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.